Welcome to This is Douglas County. I'm your host, Rick Martin. In creating this show, we promised to showcase Douglas County services and the people who provided those services. My next guest knows the meaning of service all too well. As the Assistant Director of Government Services for Douglas County and a Sergeant Major in the National Guard of the United States, he's truly become a community hero. Get ready to learn more about the man inside the uniform, Heath Cowart. This is Douglas County. Mr. Heath Coward, thank you so much for joining me today. Yes, sir. Thank you, Rick. Uh, you know, I've got to say it's a, a, a real honor and a privilege to have you here, not only as a Douglas County government employee, but also as a military soldier where so many people uh, got a chance to uh, read an article that was published uh, about you. I've been getting a lot of positive feedback. Yeah, I've had a lot of feedback as well, people that uh, didn't know I was in the military at all. So, <laughs> really? Yeah. So uh, it's taken uh, This is Douglas County uh, show, um, an opportunity to really share, you know, you, the soldier, and also you, um, the service you give to the county uh, as a, really as a leader. Um, tell us your title, please, for those who didn't get a chance to read the article. Sure. I'm the Assistant Director of Government Services. Um, that en encompasses the Solid Waste Services, Landfill, and Fleet for the county. Okay, and those who may not understand what Fleet is, which we recently you know, did a show about. Right, so uh, Fleet is every government vehicle that the county has. So all the police cars, all the emergency vehicles, fire, EMS vehicles, everything that any government uh, department drives to to do their job, those vehicles or assets come through fleet and we're in charge of ordering parts for them, keeping them on a uh, normal maintenance schedule mm -hmm. and uh, fixing repairs, anything like that. So it's, it's quite a job. So when uh, a vehicle becomes disabled, so to speak, and it needs to be towed, you know, that's pretty much where you guys come in, huh? Yes, uh, it would be, it would come into the shop off of uh, Fairburn Road at our new facility, which is a lot, uh, it, it's a lot nicer to do the job, makes, gives our mechanics more room, um, better equipment, better technology, so it's, it's been great having this new facility to, to go to and it just brings in more it, it's easier to find mechanics who would like to come and work for the county um, we're as a private agencies pay more than a government agency so we always have that constant uh, um, challenge of mm -hmm. getting good people in um, when they can make more at a private but one thing i noticed since joining the the county myself is really the value of, of many county employees mm -hmm. uh, with the experience. I mean, uh, you know, I don't have statistics right now, but I, I have come across a quite a number who have left private industry to work for the county, which speaks of great pride, I think. Oh, yeah. So I find that we have really two ideal uh, categories. We have people that have retired or are right at retiring and they don't want to, they, you know, they still got a lot of service left and they don't want to sit at home. They want to to do their job and they need uh, benefits. So they come into the county with 20, 30 years of experience mm -hmm. and one retirement under their belt. And that's 
that's the ideal. They're not looking for money. They're just looking for a, a, a good job and good benefits, and we, we provide that, and they give us great service. So works out good. And we also get a lot of new, um, fresh, fresh to the market um, technicians and uh -huh. talent, yep, and, uh, and those are great as well. We've got some, some pool with West Central uh, Technical College and things of that nature, and they let us know. West as, Georgia, you mean? West Georgia Technical College? Yes. Okay. yes. okay. And uh, they let us know um, mm -hmm. basically who it, you've got a graduate of there and they, they show them the way to the courthouse and yeah. where the personnel department is and they can fill out their applications. Um, and we get some of those in. Yeah. Um, we also get some of those out as soon as they get some other <laughs> certifications and hit the road for their own experiences. But... Uh, that's that's kind of in general the two different uh, groups of people we get as our mechanics. You know, it's encouraging you talk about that because uh, that's one of the things we have job openings, and I think it's important that you know we let many people know that you know apply online to celebratedouglascounty.com. Absolutely. Yeah. Tell me something. We talked about you know what you oversee. Um, you mentioned fleet. Uh, you also mentioned solid waste and we are recording here at the solid your offices at the solid waste uh, facility mm -hmm. uh, when i was coming in i noticed some cars lined up can you speak about that what they're lining up what they're doing yeah so this is the uh cedar mountain landfill um and it is a c and d uh, construction debris landfill that the which means the only thing put into the ground here in douglas county is construction debris so we do not have a a tarp or a uh, membrane that protects um, from anything seeping into the earth um, so therefore we don't put any of the msw trash which mm -hmm. is for if that doesn't make sense that that is all your garbage truck trash everything that's on the curb it comes here a lot of it still comes here and they dump it in the transfer station. Okay. Um, then we load it into the back of uh, open top tractor trailers gotcha. and we ship it to Grady Road to Republic. And so it goes in the ground there in a lined landfill. Anything that has wood, construction, uh, tree debris, um, anything of that nature, we do put that in the ground in the back. and. Um, we cover it up once a month and we seed and straw it and that's basically the only thing that goes in the ground here okay. is that and gotcha. everything else runs out of a transfer station. So tell me what are the hours of operation that could really help our viewers? So we're 8 to 5 and um, Monday through Friday? Monday through Saturday. Oh that's good to that's know. That's right. Saturday is a, our busiest day just because everybody's <laughs> off. Um, so up, right? if yeah if you're coming up here get up early and, and and get ready have your coffee while you're sitting in line right. and uh, you'll get in and out no problem. We average around 700 transactions. Really? 700 different vehicles that come in here with either pulling a trailer or the back full um, and yeah, they come in, they, they dump, they come back in, weigh, pay, and, and head out. Oh, we've got an extensive uh, recycling center okay. um, as you come across the scales. And you beat me to the punch because I was just about oh, to ask you about it that. It kind of rolls off there. Um, <laughs> nice. The, you go through and you, we have it all sectioned off okay. exactly what needs to go where, uh, scrap metal, um, bicycles we have. And you know it's funny because when I joined the county, a lot of people didn't know that we have recycling. You know, uh, yeah. we do, and people can come right here mm -hmm. you know, to, to 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 do that. You know, so absolutely, and and we really make it easy for them because you can pull in. You don't go back into the landfill transfer station. Um, it has there is some mud depending on the weather, mm -hmm. and uh, big trucks are coming in and out uh, constantly there. So. There can be some issues that people don't want to drive their $50,000 vehicle into and, and drop some <laughs> stuff off, and I understand that totally. But um, 
here at the transfer state or the uh, recycling center, each little spot you stop and uh, it's, it's neat. We keep it organized. Um, we have inmates and a deputy who from before we unlock the gate, they're down there sorting through things and, and already starting to, to put things where it needs to go and, and we'll help people offload things if, we, if they need it. Um, but we've got plastic, glass, cardboard, you, you name it, we've got a place for it. All of those things. Now, we don't make money on all those. It mm -hmm. depends on the market. Um, but we, you know, we deal in, in tonnage. So even a few pennies here and there mm -hmm. at the end of the month makes a difference. And really the value is presented to that's, uh, the residents or anyone who's coming through the recycling. That's right. And, and, you know, we're helping the environment. So Absolutely. It's, it's really good to know. You know, just in explaining to me about our recycling process here at Douglas County, it's very clear that you're so knowledgeable. Now, how long have you worked with Douglas County? With Douglas County, it'll be 13 years this December. Wow. Yeah. 13 December years. December 4th. Man, man. Yeah. Now, were you always with government services? Or no, you... no. Um, I was with engineering. Um, okay. I, I'd done engineering technician jobs uh, for probably four different engineering companies prior to the county. Um, last big thing was uh, the runway that was going over Hartsfield Jackson that goes over the interstate. I was gonna, I was picked and our firm out of Nashville, Tennessee was going to work and get the contract of that and I got mobilized for the National Guard to go to uh, our Operation Iraqi Freedom uh, okay. 3. So that was a four time frame. And uh, back then the deployments were as long as you, you, you did a, a year in country and you did all your training up as well. So I was gone for about two years. Um, wow. Anyway, I come back and uh, uh, the job was offered to me was in Birmingham and I didn't want to go to Birmingham after uh, being away from a brand new house and, and wife mm -hmm. um, for two years. So uh, I jumped into a, another engineering firm and started doing all the site work for Kia okay. um, out of LaGrange, the big site they built, uh, I guess, 13 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, I was just wearing myself out. It was wow. seven days a week. Mm -hmm. um, I would drive from here to LaGrange every morning, come back. I didn't have any kids. And but that's like a 90 minute? Oof, yeah, and that's all back roads, cutting through Noonan, mm -hmm. dodging uh, mm -hmm. deer and anything else that wants to jump out. So it, uh, it, it made it challenging sometimes, but it was just, it was not what I wanted to do um, with my time. I, man, I just got married, men. My wife was serious about having a family, starting a family, and mm -hmm. uh, and we just couldn't, you know, you gotta be home to do that. So <laughs> that was one of my biggest deciding factors. Uh, I started looking for something less hours, closer by, and came, fell into the engineering department at Douglas County, needed a technician to go out and do like quality control for okay. neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. um, most of my experience was on concrete and asphalt and dirt um, soil so and I had all the certifications that you could want for to build a highway or a runway yeah. which was pretty extensive uh, for the state of Georgia and Tennessee so I stepped into that role eight years went by and uh, and one deployment to Kosovo and um, then this position just kind of was made available and yeah. I said I had yeah. no idea I didn't think uh, never knew Gary Jenkins uh, my, my boss mm -hmm. made him a time or two and it was always me doing a project that was yeah. his like uh, we did some did some work on the old gas tanks off Chicago Avenue that's awesome um, and that kind of thing that's all we had uh, as far I didn't know what he did um, he said, I'd be interested in, I think you would be interested in my yeah. old job. Yeah. And I said, well, 
no disrespect, what do you do now, sir? <laughs> and uh, it kind of went from there, and uh, we, we, uh, we talked and we met about it the next week and came in here and, uh, and I said, wow, let's, let's do it, let's make a change. So as you're paying service to the county, it seems the county paid service back to you. Yep. Wow, wow. And uh, any regrets? None, none at all. I, I went to, uh, I got certified as a landfill operator. Um, from University of Georgia, uh, so went to the UGA, walked okay. across the uh, go Bulldogs. The, huh? That's right, go Dogs. <laughs> and uh, so that was great. Um, got a little certificate on the wall there, nice. and uh, so yeah, so in. it was uh, nice. that was a, a little check in the bucket list mm -hmm. too. That was nice. Um, and it, I'm let's see when I before I when I started engineering yeah. to now, 13 years I have three children, um, five, seven, and nine. You feel blessed? I do, and the same wife, you know. So yeah. I, I feel I feel blessed, and it's because of this this job, these hours, the uh, the benefits that make this work for me and my wife. And uh, I drop my kids off to school, and I pick them up when I leave work. So it's, it's amazing. That's awesome. That's me. really good to hear. You know, that's really good to hear. Uh, you know, one of the, the, the key things I wanted to do you know, from our department was help tell stories that people, you know, may not know that uh, bring value mm -hmm. from what Douglas County has to offer. And in my time here, I really learned that you um, are one of them, you know, in the multiple uh, uh, things that you do and are responsible for. Uh, you know, the little fact that's well, that's not well known that's coming out now is your service to this country, uh, the United States military, as you've been a member um, for some time. Mm. You know, how long have you been in the military? 21 years. Wow, which branch? Tell me about that. Uh, Army. Army. So uh, I enlisted, um, Army. And why did you join? My dad was, he was prior service, he was Navy. Um, I didn't I try not to hold that against him. No, <laughs> no I didn't. He uh, he did not serve very long. It was during uh, Vietnam time frame era, uh, and he was he was basically trained to be on these uh, patrol boats that went up the canals and uh, and right before he was shipping out, that they something fate intervened and mm -hmm. he had a heart murmur and mm -hmm. was not allowed to to okay. deploy so um, and because of that I'm here probably <laughs> so you know things happen for a reason um, and but my grandfather his my dad's dad um, he served in World War II really and he was a cavalry scout okay and the <laughs> Which is one of my MOSs as well, and I didn't. Impart my ignorance. Um, uh, MOS. MOS, military uh, specialty um, okay. branch. So okay. it's um, it's your your exact job that okay. you do for the military. Gotcha. So a infantry is a eleven Bravo, um, cavalry uh, to be a cav uh, scout mm -hmm. is a nineteen Delta. Okay. Well, my grandfather was a 19 Delta. He was a Cab Scout, and I didn't find this out until three years ago. He I was told. Didn't tell you. I didn't wow. know. Well, he died when I was um, very young, but yeah. nobody in the family really knew what he did. They mm -hmm. just, oh, he was he was a Ranger. He did this. He was in the war, but they didn't. I had to dig and dig, wow. and it turned out he. I was the same thing he was, and no, and I didn't do it because of, you know, mm -hmm. I thought I was doing something separate, but we were doing the same thing. So yeah. that was pretty neat to learn. Um, and then also in infantry as well. You know, so. I got to tell you, just as you're speaking of him, I tell you the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Because one thing that I happen to learn that uh, was really powerful, um, is you know based really the conversation we had 
um, that many people don't know. Um, the conversation of, you know, that brought you to be a decorated soldier, bronze awarded soldier. Um, tell us a little bit about that. Well, um, how, do, how do you, you know, as, as much, you know, as you're willing to, because, you know, I, I respect how humble you are and, mm. uh, you know, it, it goes without saying, but the reason I'm asking, I want to be clear, um, it's such a powerful, inspirational, encouraging story that you bring um, as a Douglas County employee and service to your country that, um, you know, I just want to hear it because at this time, you know, it's, it's, you know, this will be airing through November um, where we have the Veterans Parade, <coughs> right. the Parade, you know. But tell us about that. What brought that award? Okay. Um, so in 04 and to 06, we deployed to Iraq for Operation Iraqi Freedom. Uh, three, it was during the surge, if you maybe remember that was what the big media was pushing during mm -hmm. that time frame. Mm -hmm. um, so I was a scout platoon. Uh, I was an E-5, a sergeant, buck sergeant. Um, most of us were. And then uh, we, I had a truck, uh, one Humvee. So our normal uh, duties would, in, would be route clearance, um, we would do recons of routes prior to uh, like higher, uh, if we had to run yeah. a route for yeah. a special individual that yeah. was coming in the theater yeah. and we would run that route prior to and then put out our scouts in key, lower, key areas to make sure the route stayed clear. Gotcha. So you received an assignment to mm -hmm. go looking. Right. So we're we're doing these jobs and uh, we're we're headed out at uh, two o'clock in the morning. And so it's dark. Very dark. Very gotcha. dark. And we're driving on these sandy uh, little trails, tank trails. And How many vehicles? Would you seven. Estimate? Seven, seven vehicles? vehicles that okay. night. Um, we had a, a exact route where we were going, um, what time we were supposed to be there, that kind of thing. Um, before we could make it far in our, our mission or our trip that night, we had come up on a suspected IED. Mm -hmm. um, so we bypassed the situation, called it up to EOD, and we were able to bypass, so we bypassed for the sake of time and so we can continue on with the mission because other people depended on us getting to where we were going to be to overwatch certain areas, right? So we kept trying to make it to our objective. Um, another, the next leg of the, uh, of the trip, we, we hit another IED. In total, I think it was four that night. Um, really? Four either IEDs that w went off or we spotted them prior to them going off each time making us uh, reroute and come up with a different plan to get to where we were going. This put us actually going over this one intersection several times that night. Um, we called it moon dust. Mm -hmm. the, the particles of dirt and sand were so fine. Um, when you would drive a Humvee through a, a dirt road and you would hit this moon dust, it's just, it would completely brown out all visual. So when we would go across a bridge, we would have to go slow. We'd have to go one vehicle at a time and we had radio comms as our primary. Mm -hmm. So we'd do a radio check, hey, this, you know, you, this is me, I just made it through, Yeah, you're clear, we're on the far side. And then they would come through. Well, if our radio did not go down, and radios usually work when you don't need them, and mm -hmm. when you do need them, something always happens to them. Um, and so we had our, our backup plan was uh, flashlights. I'll tell you that so you understand what, how a vehicle ended up, um, missing 
for about an hour. And, uh, and it was that, it was coming back through that same intersection. Um, the driver of this vehicle, three soldiers in it, um, one out of Fair Play, Douglas County, Georgia, graduated with me uh, from my high school, from Alexander in 96, Thomas mm. Strickland. What's um, his name again? Thomas Strickland. Thomas Strickland. Gotcha. Out of Fair Play area. Um, mm -hmm. Great, great soldier, great dude. I mean, just all around awesome guy. And uh, he was the commander of the truck. Uh, we had a guy, uh, Joshua Dingler, Dingler out of Bremen was driving and Paul Saylor also out of Bremen was the gunner. They, in short, took the turn a little too wide mm -hmm. and there's not curbs, there's not anything to let you know yeah. that's a, you're about to go off a drop off. So Total he was darkness. close, he was very close to the edge and then five feet of the road broke off. Mm. And that was just enough for his vehicle, his Humvee to flip and completely turn upside down, submerged in the canal below. Okay. Um, the only thing you could see was a very, very small s little sliver of the tire. And we couldn't find that for a long time. The reason we were able to to go past that intersection thinking we still had everybody was Radio comms went down, couldn't get them on that. Did the red light, the vehicle that was in front of Thomas's vehicle, they, they flashed the light. The vehicle behind Thomas saw the light, mm -hmm. flashed back. They got their confirmation. That next vehicle went on. Nobody, nobody was able to see that the vehicle actually, the road broke off and they flipped upside down. It wasn't a loud sound or anything, it just disappeared. And it was under your leadership, you guys were able to locate that vehicle. In the After lots of, uh, we volunteered, I volunteered to go back and look for, for uh, my friends. I couldn't find them, couldn't go forward without them. Mm -hmm. um, so we had myself and another truck uh, Chris Chastain he out of Kennesaw area he uh, we got together and we took off we had we were talking to uh, any kind of air assets in the area we finally got some they were looking in water looking in canals looking for anything heat signatures and we they finally found one the problem you could not see this vehicle in a canal because it was completely submerged. And if I were to walk to the side of the road mm -hmm. and look down, you couldn't see that vehicle. And which country was this again? This is Iraq. Okay, this was yeah. Iraq. So you push the hours, we're at about four o'clock in the morning now. And we had gone back to that same intersection. I said, Dude, it's gotta be it. This is something just ain't right about that. And yeah. I laid down, I pulled myself over the edge of that little cliff. And at that point, and only then was I able to see there was something underwater. So I, I yelled up to uh, Chris that, hey, I think we've got, I got a visual of something in the water. I'm mm -hmm. going to check it out. So I went in to the canal. Um, I was able to find the, Humvee, I was able to get to the vehicle and the, the main drain, the water was pouring gallons and gallon, hundreds of gallons on this car. It was, uh, it was as big as, I mean, it was huge. You could drive a four wheeler through the, through the culvert um, and it was just full water pouring out. I got the door open and was able to get to all three soldiers. Um, they were, all three had died. Um, they were deceased and there was, there was nothing I could do to save their lives at that time. So it was, it became a recovery mission of their, their bodies and, and all the sensitive items at that point. Um, In an effort to pretty much and then Strickland was one of those, right? He was, yeah, he was, he was the truck commander for that. Um, and like I said, he's a 
He's a friend of mine. You know, I still run into his relatives um, out in Fair Play. Talked to his mom. Um, his dad was in our my unit uh, before. So just a, a legacy of great Americans that came out of that. Um, the Strickland heritage yeah. out of Fair Play, and uh, I, j I just can't say enough about that family and the caliber of person he was. Um, and you know, it, it, it's painful when you have to when you when you get close with somebody like that, and you look at them, and even you know, all these years later, I look back at uh, what happens. It was August fifteenth, and every August fifteenth. Whether I'm here or deployed, we have the same group of people that meet and we go to each grave site. Uh, we have our own traditions mm -hmm. that probably only we understand, but uh, we do it like clockwork. And if we're deployed, like uh, when I was in Kosovo, 11 to 12, there was a big mountain there called Mount Duke and uh, we climbed the mountain for on their anniversary. Okay. Describe um, that feeling. Uh, just a, a great sense of pride and um, just, it feels like they were still with us. It feels like we're not letting, we. I take them and their memories with me everywhere I go. And uh, so does everybody that was there that night. Still, I still uh, talk to some of their families from time to time. I know Alexander High School still has, um, ceremonies where they recognize the fallen soldiers and, and fallen uh, former students mm -hmm. of Alexander, and he's one of those. Um, I've been there at nights they dedicate just for people who have graduated um, from there that have passed in the military from across all the branches and for whatever reason. And it's just really nice to see that this community is, is we're growing you know, it, sometimes it feels like we're exploding in mm -hmm. the last few years, um, but we still have that hometown feel and we still have that sense of pride that, you know, we we share that and we're proud of it. We're proud of who we are, even even where they came from, you know. Right. So it's, uh, and you can go to Bremen and you can, you can look at the high school for Dingler and you can look at the high school for Paul Sailor and they have different things in their name, you know, at the school, the gym, post office, there's different things. So it's, it's really nice that everybody around here in West Georgia still, still treats uh, the military at a, and holds them in a high, high regard like that. I mean, with the utmost respect, um, I, yeah, you know, and uh, I've never been in the mil military myself, uh, but since I moved here in 2003, you know, ironically from Washington, D.C., where, where the Pentagon's located, right? right. <laughs> but um, it's really allowed me a, a sense uh, of pride, you know, talking with you guys and learning about, you know, and, and really honoring the impact of our military, you know, in, in terms of, you know, what you guys do to help protect not just me and the freedom, you know, that I live to have with my family as well. So I thank you sincerely. I thank you for that. You're very welcome. You know, and you know, speaking about that, how long have you been in the military? Because you're about to be deployed. Yeah. So 21 years, September the 12th. That was my anniversary date. Um, and I did active duty um, right off the bat. Then I rolled into National Guard, and I didn't know what I. I didn't know much about National Guard at the time, other than active duty soldiers make fun of National Guard soldiers and. And vice, and vice versa, um, but I can tell you because I've lived in both worlds, and it's uh, after 9/11. We, we, the National Guard. I, the best way to describe it to me is, uh, you took the National Guard off the shelf after 9/11. <clears throat> it was dusty. It maybe you know it. It once it got off and you dusted it off and and put it in the game, it started playing it never went back on that shelf again. And we became a active part of the uh, mobilization, like a rotation. And so without okay. the National Guard, the active duty soldiers, 
um, our brothers and sisters, they could not get home at all to spend any time with their family. So it would, they would augment their forces with us where active duty would do one year deployed, two years at home. National Guard did one year deployed, five years at home and tried to rotate everything like that. Um, other units are deployed a little bit f more than others. Mm -hmm. um, we, I'm part of the best National Guard brigade in the state of Georgia and uh, like top five in the nation. And uh, that's 48th Brigade uh, Infantry Combat Team. We, we're the premier Georgia uh, unit for infantry and we do we we have cav we have infantry we do more missions than anybody in the state and we've got we've we've got the respect that goes along with that um what do you what, uh, what, sorry to interrupt you but sorry. before you, you, you what do you want people to know about what life is like being deployed because it's mm. not every day you literally want to be away from your family as you, oh, you no. know, serve and protect. I don't want to be away from my family for a minute, to be honest with you. I, that's the worst part. Um, and see, and that's what I know how much of a sacrifice it takes, you yeah. know, that you, you're willing to do this. And, and so, but I want people to really understand how special you are. Well, it's, uh, you get a, you get a sense of, of pride in the job. Um, and you know I've had that before I even joined. I knew that's what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a soldier. And I became a soldier. Um, some people were soldiers for for decades and never were in a combat situation because of the time frame. Um, guys in in my tenure don't have that uh, excuse. Uh, not excuse, but it, it's that everybody has been there. If you're able, um, they would send you. We've been at war for 17 years, um, you know, so it's, we've been multiple times and once you go, you see, you see really what firsthand, what you're fighting against, what difference you can bring, and, uh, and, and what your actual uh, capabilities are and, it's, if I didn't go, uh, I'm, not, I'm not, I know who would go, but it would be some of my brothers and sisters that I work really hard to protect and they work just as hard to protect me. Um, everything in my military career, you move up, right? That's the goal mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, you, as you get promoted, you, you get a little bit more pay, a lot more responsibility, um, you know, and at where I'm at now as a sergeant major of a um, operations for a brigade, it's, it's a tremendous honor. It's a huge uh, responsibility. I have thousands of soldiers um, okay. before uh, it was I had three in a truck. Mm -hmm. Then as I moved up, I was over operations as a, uh, as a sergeant major in a battalion. So I, I had about 500. Then I moved over to a command sergeant major as another battalion of infantry. Um, I had about 900, and now I'm at the brigade level. Um, I can tell you all through from private to command yeah. sergeant major, um, there's been a time where I said, that was a bad plan. I wish I had a chance. I would have done that better. I would have done something different. Well, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm literally getting that opportunity to be in the, the pressure cooker, if you will, um, and, and, to and advise the commander. This is the, we come up with a course of actions based off of what the enemy has out there off of real intelligence that we get from mm -hmm. our soldiers and they go they tell us then we say all right this is what he's probably going to do this they might they may do this here yeah. we come up with two or three good possibilities and we 
just completely resource each one of those options and this is what how we would do it. It's a mind game or war game and we work it out completely to figure out how to fight against it. Mm -hmm. Brief that all to the commander and the commander says, nah, I think course of action number one's good. Y'all nailed it or y'all are completely crazy and uh, we're going to do this. But, uh, you know, that's our job. And that will be my job in this role uh, going forward. And I just think it's, I remember being the guy going, who planned this? Yeah. You know, <laughs> man, if there's a day I make it better, I'm going to, I'm going to do something. I'll never do something as bad as this. Well, I can't tell you I'm, I'm going to have all the answers, but I'm going to go and try. You know what I mean? And I've been, I've been there and I've been able to see little differences here and there make a big difference down the line to soldiers who right now they don't understand what's going on. They don't know how these orders get yeah. cut and how they process. They don't know the people like me fighting for them in some place that you got to have four badges to get into and security clearance and you know it everybody is uh everybody's about to pull their hair out if they have any left because they're stressed over these real world mind games of different uh actual troops on ground and this is how we fight and this is how we strategize so so, so with you overseeing about a thousand men how many is a commander so to speak a commander yeah. so for the 48th Brigade, yeah. uh, Colonel Smith, he, he's in charge. Uh, we've got about 6,000 soldiers. Wow. And that's the perspective that I wanted to share because mm -hmm. even a thousand, you know, that's like the CEO of a company. I mean, that's right. a heavy responsibility yeah, that so you have. We're, we're uh, very large. It's him and a command sergeant, Major Marks. Mm -hmm. um, great, great leaders. You know, I'm lucky to have them. Uh, to follow, but those are those are the two senior guys that I'm working for and gotcha. working with, gotcha. and uh, and that's <clears throat> they they bounce around to all the battalions and give them their their guidance, mm -hmm. and uh, and we work on recipes for success in between and brief them on it based off what's what's happening and what what's going on and. And uh, that's kind of how you battle track as you go. And that's, they tell you, this is the way I want to do it, or this is the way I want to do it. Start looking, you start looking, you start leaning forward, thinking, ah, I know, I know he's very aggressive. We need to, we need to try this option. He's going to want to see that, you know, that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's two guys uh, that, Make call the shots for all the many people, and Got you. we're all working for. Them. I hear you. <laughs> Tell me for those who uh, aren't clear to where you're being deployed, uh, as you're being deployed to Afghanistan. Uh, you know, have you been before? I've not been to Afghanistan. Okay. Okay. This will be Got the you. first time. Um, I've, and all I, all I feel comfortable telling you is that. As a brigade, as the 48th Brigade, we will be spread out in several locations throughout the entire country gotcha. of Afghanistan. Gotcha. Um, and you know, we'll we'll be doing a probably about a year rotation. Gotcha. Uh, and that's that's about it. But it's the same working uh, on the continuing mission yeah. there. While you're gone. You'll be gone for about a year. Mm -hmm. What do you have anything for the county employees and others who would be watching um, that we can do or share for you? And I'm sure prayers and thoughts are good, but I don't want to, you know, you're going to get that. But is there anything? Well, I, I'm glad you said say that because I haven't even mentioned God in the whole time I've been talking and that is the number one difference and uh, the only reason I'm here right now I guarantee it um, there's countless countless uh, things that have happened I couldn't explain and I'm here because of a divine force and that's got to be God I, I am a child of God and uh, I I just ask you to pray for all of us um, and and 
you know, pray for the families because a lot of times the families here back home, um, people like my wife, uh, Marissa Cowart, who mm -hmm. is an amazing woman, she works for Southwire and she's in a, in a high uh, director's role in that, that uh, company, yeah. but we also have three young children. They're all in one school for the first time this year, so that helps, but uh, three kids by yourself, Oof. Got gotcha. you. That's, that's hard. That's tough duty right yeah. there, I'm telling you. So uh, I don't know who has it harder. Well, I'm going to tell you <laughs> this, you know, um, consider it done. You got the yep. thoughts, you got the prayers. Um, they will be given, you know, we're not going to forget you. Um, we only wish you the best. And, and uh, you know, I want to say sincerely, not only thank you for the time you've given us today, but we thank you for your service. Yes, thank sir. you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, thank you for joining us with this special uh, edition of This is Douglas County. Uh, on behalf of Heath Coward, I'm Rick Martin. Thank you and see you soon.